Hey everyone, so lately I've taken a short break from survival tech and have started working on advanced encoded storage. What I wanted to do was to complete an encoded storage system using some of the more recent advances in storage tech. Since the past two and a half years when I began, I've made a lot of progress and I think that it will become a reality soon. Now, the only problem with that is that lately, I've lost my mojo! So instead of working on encoded tech, I've been working on improving some of the smaller storage contraptions. I'm sure that most people know what a hopper filter is in Minecraft. It is a simple device used to sort out specific items. You set the item you want to filter by putting it in the first slot of the filter hopper. Afterwards, only the items that can combine with that item will be sucked up by the hopper. In storage terminology, this is called a fixed item filter. When combined with a box loader, a machine that packs items into boxes, the result can be very useful for situations where you need to collect lots of items, such as with farm outputs. Something like this setup works very well for most farms. However, there are some cases where you'd want to have something else. Take for example, when you dupe concrete. A concrete factory can produce a wider range of outputs. If one were to use fixed item sorters for a concrete factory, one would have to build many of them as you have to build one for each item type multiplied by the speed of the concrete factory. A variable filter loader can be a solution for this problem as it can change its item type dynamically. As such, while a fixed setup might require hundreds of filters, a variable system which does the same thing might only need a dozen or so slices. This particular variable filter in front of me was designed four years ago by Palapala, the progenitor of variable sorting systems. In order to better show how it all works, I've taken out a single slice from the variable filter. In its initial state, the slice is not assigned to any item type. What this means is that the topmost filter hopper has no item in its first slot. As such, it is able to pick up any item that comes its way. When the item is picked up by the topmost hopper of an unassigned slice, the slice now becomes assigned. In other words, an item is ready in the first slot. From now on, this hopper will only pick up items of the same type, in this case, stone. When more items of the same type arrive, the red circuit is activated, unlocking the input hopper, allowing for items to be sucked in through the system and loaded into the shulker box. At the same time, the counter clock mechanism is activated. This forces items into the leftmost dropper. At this point, the slice behaves like a fixed item filter loader, which loads items into boxes. Full boxes are broken and sent to the output. When the flow of items stops, the counter clock mechanism is deactivated, which allows the dropper to begin transferring items to the right. When the dropper is empty, the slice is then reset. This means that the filter item is taken out of the filter hopper and put into the box, which is then broken and sent to the output. Now the slice is back to its original state and can be assigned to any other item that comes its way. Now, why did I make a new one? Well, there's two reasons. First is to make it a little bit more dense. And second is to fix some bugs that this previous one had. Yeah, I know storage tech is full of bugs. Terrible, right? So the problem was that firstly, this sorter is not actually tileable. Since a hopper with the first full slot outputs a string 3 signal, slices can activate the ones adjacent to it if items are input in larger batches. When this happens, those filters can lose their placeholder dummy items and break the system. Thus, this particular design is limited to hopper speed per item type, which makes it pretty much useless for a lot of applications such as concrete storage. Second, because of the way the filter detects items, single items can get stuck in the system. When only one item of a type is input, the slice will be eternally reserved for that item type until a second item of the same type comes its way. This can happen due to a variety of reasons. For example, if a concrete factory has a small chance of collecting fish drops. In that case, you'll have to occasionally remove the filter item from the slice in order to free up the stuck filters. Thirdly, as differently stacking items have different single strength output ratios, this filter is only compatible with 64 stackable items or 16 stackable items separately. You can't sort 16 stackable items and 64 stackable items at the same time. If you do, the filter can break. Lastly, 
Since the box loaders don't replace boxes within 8 game ticks, items can accumulate over time at the loader hopper with each box replacement. This means that the filter can break if it is used for a long stretch of time. So ultimately, all of these issues had to be fixed in order for variable filters to be practically useful. And so, I've basically done that by redesigning the whole system. On my left here is an expanded overview of the logic behind the original variable filter design. On my right here is the new logic that I came up with in order to fix all of those issues. Instead of using just one single strength to detect items like with the previous design, this new design uses two single strengths. The first single strength is used to detect whether or not the filter has been initialized. The second single strength is used to detect when to begin emptying the filter. As such, the design will not get stuck with single items, and it will also work with 16 stackable and 64 stackable at the same time. Moreover, the box loader is now greatly simplified, and it should no longer accumulate items as the input is temporarily paused while the box breaks. Finally, in order to make this tileable and work with any input sizes, I've compacted this design into a one wide AB tileable form factor. When tiled, each of the two distinct slices are alternated to prevent signals from interfacing with adjacent slices. Now, this design can be directly used in a concrete factory without issues. Now that's it for today. Thank you for watching and goodbye.